our next speaker has expertise in multiple scientific disciplines, uh, and he's currently uh, sorry. The uh, the disciplines would be uh, animal nutrition, marine sciences, as well as uh, plant process engineering. Uh, in fact, he's currently pursuing a PhD in plant process engineering. Uh, his main area of research is actually on degenerative diseases, uh, particularly four main degenerative diseases, uh, which are cancer, uh, diabetes, heart attack, and stroke. Uh, this gentleman is a regular speaker uh, and a trainer at uh, various companies, universities, community centers, uh, rotary clubs, and events uh, around KL. So without any further ado, let me present uh, Mr. Joseph Lim. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you to Truma Foundation for giving me this opportunity to share. Actually, it's a very boring topic. So I put some nice pictures to make it interesting. <laughs> <coughs> the topic today is about pets, the good, the bad, the ugly. Okay, do you know that taking the right fat will save your life? It will prevent you actually from getting these degenerative diseases like cancers, diabetic, actually stroke and heart attack. It can also prevent you from getting all these uh, old man disease, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's. It will make you younger, 5 to 10 years. Let me prove it to, to you today uh, for sharing this with you. It's a little bit technical and boring. Please bear with me, all right? <clears throat> Important. Because it reduces the risk of allergy, asthma, and infection. It can also keep you sleep. And it can also help you to reduce the risk of depression. It can prevent also mood swings. Huh? and uh, reduce those degenerative diseases that I mentioned earlier. Dietary fats is actually a supply fat soluble vitamin. Use uh, vitamin A, D, A, D, K, and beta carotene. Now, the cholesterol uh, that you take is actually the raw material for these hormones. As I think our earlier speaker has uh, spoken about estrogen, testosterone, and also this uh, DHEA. Like hydroxy and pinocero, or the collagen uh, hormone. Uh, saturated fats and cholesterol, they are very important structural component of each every cell in our body. And fat is necessary for the absorption, <coughs> proper digestion and absorption of dietary nutrients. Now, fats are very important because this essential fatty acid they are actually the building blocks of the membranes. That's the gatekeepers of each and every cell in the body, especially the brain. Oh, and they all contain fats. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that 60% of fats and 30% of that in the brain in the form of DHA? Your brain is make up a lot of these fats, saturated fats. And the whole part of your brain, the part that used for sustained attention, has the highest concentration of DHA or essential fatty acid. DHA, or one is essential fatty acid, is needed by the rocks in the retina of your eye that is for the normal dark adaptation, seeing well in the dark and adapting to the light. DHA is also very important for fetal and infant brain development. <coughs> and your brain's, brain synapses require long chain fatty acid to be efficient. Children with milk Milk intolerance have been shown to be deficient in essential fatty acid. And children with poor motor skills, poor coordination, and often lack, they are found to lack as essential fatty acids. Now basically, we can categorize fats into three types. The good fats, the bad fats, and the ugly fats. The good fats are normally the polyunsaturated oil. Only the three, and omega-3 and 6, and also the medium chain fatty acid. Uh, the short chain, I think earlier the book I mentioned about butyric acid, there's both in the colon. But then you also need the medium chain fatty acid, which has a very high nutraceutical value. The bad fats are those mainly from the red meat, and they're bad when you take too much of them. And the ugly fat are actually the trans fats. They are found in processed or fried foods. Uh, 
a hydrogenated uh, oil, for example margarine, they are very high in trans fats and these are the ugly fats. Now, these good fats, there's the essential fats, the omega-3 and 6 and the medium chain fatty acids. They can help you to stay physically healthy. They reduce the risk of allergy, asthma, eczema infection because they have anti-inflammatory and immune support uh, pro properties. Every cell in our body is held together by this deep membrane which actually make up of fats, primarily the essential fatty acid. And the composition of these fats in the membrane is determined by the composition of the fats that we eat. Now, due to their physical shape, essential fats contribute to better quality cell membrane, which allow the nutrients and the oxygen to get in and out of your cell more easily. They help the carbon dioxide and other waste material to leave the cell efficiently. Good fats also promotes good mental health. A deficiency of good fats can result in fatigue, poor memory, behavior, development problem, depression, dyslexia, and also attention deficit disorder or ADD and some form of autism. So your child requires good fats because these fats are optimal for your child intelligence, which I will show you later. So the child's ability to perform in the world on a balance of actually mental, emotional, and physical intelligence. Okay. Now, if you, uh, this is not the uh, estrogen quotient. Uh, this is your emotional quotient. Uh, your EQ. This is a measure of his or her ability to respond emotionally to situation. Uh, there's appropriate and sensitive way. That's what we define EQ. And if a person loses his or her temper easily and switches between depression and hyperactivity, lacking in emotional balance and perspective, there's a room for improvement, how, however bright it may be. Now, on the other hand, is the IQ. Most people are aware that huh, these are intelligent quotient, right? And because IQ test determines a person's ability to make intellectual connection and deal with complex uh, uh, concepts of. And between EQ and IQ today, we have the BQ, right? the physical intelligent quotient, which is all about brain-body coordination. A child with a low BQ may seem clumsy and uncoordinated or have even trouble skills such as handwriting, reading, and also taking notes. People have low adaptability as low uh, this uh, BQ. And why? Which I will later think how fast affect PQ, EQ uh, of a person. But basically, let us look at the types of fats in our body. Basically, our body, the fats and the fatty acids in the body, about 45% of it is made up of saturated fats. Now, we have a short chain, medium chain, long chain. As mentioned earlier, the short chain, the butyric acid, those are short chain fatty acids produced in the colon. Then we have this medium chain uh, fatty acids, which is present in the mother's milk. Uh, and also, one common good source here is DML, this is a virgin coconut oil. Then we have the long chain fatty acid, which is not a very favorable uh, <coughs> fatty acid. The other 40% in the body is made up of olive acid or omega-9. These are 40%. They are called conditional uh, essential fatty acid, which means the body can, if you have fats uh, in the body, the body is capable of actually converting them into medium chain or even polyunsaturated fats. Now, a good source is olive oil. Now, you have the proof of polyunsaturated fatty acid. They are only 5% in the body. Despite of this 5%, they contain the omega-3 and the omega-6 and they are, they are essential fatty acid. That means your body cannot synthesize them. You have to take it from external source, such as fish oil, gorilla oil, chia seed oil, flax seed oil. Okay. Now, when we define a short chain uh, fatty acid, we are talking about the carbon from 2 to carbon 6. The medium change are the carbon 8 to carbon 12. And the birth death from carbon 40 to 26. These are called the long chain fatty acid. Interestingly, 
This medium chain fatty acid, or sometimes called MCFEs, or medium chain triglycerides, they are very important. They have nutraceutical value. About 15% of the mother's milk contain these MCFEs. Now, this comprises of the capric acid, there's your carbonate, the capric acid, carbon 10, and the lauric acid, carbon 12. Carbonate, carbon 10, carbon 12, the capric acid, capric acid, and the lauric acid, they are the medium chain fatty acids. And they are not stored in the body. That means they are converted into metabolizable energy, or in the form of ketones. Huh? And in the mother's milk, you have basically 15 to 20 percent of this these are medium chain fatty acids. Now, they help in hormone production and hormone balancing. They help in improving the immune system of the body and they provide immediate energy to the cells because they don't need to go through the normal uh, fatty acid chain. They go through what's called the hepatoportal vein, right into the liver and convert them into ketones. <clears throat> now, in the mother's milk, this is what happened. Let us take a look how this medium chain fatty acid. A lauric acid found in the mother's, mother's breast milk, it is taken by the baby, it goes directly into the liver and forms a compound called monolaurin. Now monolaurin is very powerful. It can kill fungus, bacteria and virus. As such, it kills all the unwanted microorganisms in the body and retain the resource-friendly bacteria. As such, it strengthens the immune system of the baby. So one of the source of building up the immune system in the baby is actually from the medium chain fatty acids. Okay, yeah. The other thing is when these medium chain fatty acids are taken into the body, they go straight to the liver. They don't raise the blood serum cholesterol, but they are converted directly into energy. And actually, they can speed up the body metabolism. And in some cases, they were able to promote uh, weight loss. Let's see how this uh, medium chain fatty acid uh, affects our hormone. Now, the first thing, the medium chain fatty acid, what does it do? It stimulates the thyroid gland, the gland here to produce thyroxine, the hormone from thyroid gland. And this thyroid, this thyroid gland also works with the brain hormone, mainly the human growth hormone and the pituitary hormone. So they work together to, they are actually the master gland in terms of metabolism here. Now one third of the people in the world suffer from actual thyroid problem. Now some, when there's excessive, uh, this, uh, if there's excessive secretion of thyroid, thyroxine in the body, they suffer from syndrome called hyperthyroidism. So no matter how much they try to eat, they can never put on weight and they are very, very hyperactive. That is a case of hyperthyroidism. On the contrary, you have the other that secretes too little thyroxine. So they suffer from syndrome called hypothyroidism. So no matter how you try to cut down their weight, this go for slimming up, they will not because the root of the problem is actually a hormone imbalance or hormone deficiency. Now, thyroid gland does not just work. Indirectly, it also works with the other hormonal gland. For example, the parathyroid. You have four parathyroid at the back. For example, if the body lacks calcium, so what happens is the thyroid gland will stimulate them to produce the pyrothyroxine stimulating hormone. And this stimulating hormone, PTH stimulating hormone, will tell the teeth and the bones to release calcium up into, into the blood. And when there's enough calcium, what happens is the parathyroid gland will secrete calcitonin, which will tell the body, the, of the bones and the, the blood to stop taking calcium from the teeth and the bones. So a balance of the hormone, both stimulating and inhibition hormone is very important. So that's the precisely some of the reason why some people continue taking calcium supplement over the years and yet they are still deficient and in calcium, the osteoporosis problem and so so horse bone. 
because the root problem is either this deficiency or an imbalance in the hormone. So in this case, you guys have to balance between a stimulating hormone, that is your parathyroid stimulating hormone, or the calcitonin, which is the inhibition hormone. So you have two hormones in the body. One is a stimulating, the other one is an inhibition hormone. Okay, let's go through. What does thyroxine hormone does? It goes to your blood. It looks for your LDL, your low-density lipoprotein. If the, if the LDL, the, the low-density lipoprotein is oxidized, it became an upper protein. That is bad. That causes a lot of health. Your arteriosclerosis later on. Your, but the lipoprotein here is the raw material. The lipid and the protein into breaks into different types of hormones. Now we must understand that hormone depletes every year between 1.25 to 1.5 percent on an average. At the age of 20, a person has full flush of hormones, then no problem. But each year it goes down. At the age of 30, we have almost only 85 percent. By the time we are 50 years old, our hormone depleted almost less than 50 percent or 55 percent. That's precisely why we feel tired in the morning, afternoon, evening. We couldn't sleep disorders or good swing. These are all driven by the hormones. Now, the first hormone is the production of the pro hormones in the body, right? Wherever it's a uh, stop. And the second one is actually your sex hormone. The precursor of a sex hormone is your pregnant alone. After the pregnant alone, it becomes your testosterone. That's a precise, every lady or woman has one ninth of your hormones, their testosterone, male hormone, unless you, can, you take some of these male products, of, like Tonka Ali, Maka, everything, then you have higher level of male hormone. After the testosterone, it moves to form your estrogen, which I think Dr. Tan has clearly indicated what is estrone, what is estradiol, and what is estradiol, the E1, E2, E3. So the precursor is from the testosterone, it will trigger going into estrogen. Now the third hormone is actually your DHEA, that is a dehyd dehydroepiandrosterone. Now these two hormones are the most abundant in the body, and they also deplete about 1.5% in a year, in every year. One produced, one produced by the kidney, the other one produced by the brain. Now, DHEA has four functions. Now, sometimes this is also known as collagen hormone. Now, what is the first function? Let's say for a person who is 50 years old, that is a physical age, a chronicle age given by God. You can't change. But if I'm 50, if I look 50 or 55, I'm not a healthy person, basically. Why? Because a healthy person should look younger than the age at least 5 or 10 years. And one of these is because of this hormone, this DHEA hormone or the collagen hormone. If I have enough DHEA hormone in my body, you will see that I will look at least 5 to 10 years younger. This is process is called a biological reverse aging. Which means when I have this adequate hormone in the body, every month, Cells produce cells, we detoxify, and the body goes through a biological reverse aging. I should look 40 or 45 if I'm at the age of 50. This is what the DHEA hormone. DHEA hormone also helps to produce collagen. Oh dear, that's why I call collagen hormone. And this is also used as a biological indicator in the hospital for breast and ovarian cancer. So we measure your DHEA level. If you have very high DHEA level, there is a very strong evidence that you do have either breast or ovarian cancers. <clears throat> it also helps in the regulation of insulin, sugar in the body. That's a prayer when you take some virgin coconut oil or um, MCM so you see that it helps in the improving the your sugar, sugar uh, <coughs> Uh, use it in the body. Now the last one is a more complex for the ladies, the progesterone. Now when the lady is young, you has a lot of estrogen. So estrogen produces eggs over for fertilization. They are for lubrications of your reproductive tract. It also give you all the female traits. That's why precise why ladies your skin are much fairer, much much tender or more <coughs> subtle than a male because of your hormone estrogen. And estrogen in this case is a stimulating hormone. 
Now, but when you have your menses or when you're pregnant, the concentration of estrogen will drop. It will then be replaced by progesterone. So in that case, progesterone is an inhibition hormone. So you don't have to, you have one either stimulating or an inhibition hormone. The problem today is when the lady is, when the menses are not coming regularly, sometimes of heavy flushes or very little or delayed, they will see a doctor. Doctor tends to prescribe a lot of steroids, sometimes hormone replacement therapy. And what happened is <clears throat> most of these contain very high level of estrogen. And uh, when there's too much estrogen in the body, you have a heart syndrome called estrogen dominance. Now, it's not good because estrogen dominance, what happened is it will stimulate her rejection. You cause the body to form cysts at the ovary stage there. All right? And later, these cysts can become fibrous. So you got cystic, fib cystic fibrosis and later it can develop into ovarian cancers and it can spread into breast cancers. That's precisely in Europe, America. We stop prescribing estrogen to the patient because there's strong correlation between estrogen dominance and breast cancers and ovarian cancers. But yet in the Asian Pacific, estrogen is still widely been prescribed in the form of us in steroid. You have a syndrome called estrogen dominance. When there's too much estrogen, it will suppress your progesterone level. So what, what you experience is a hormonal imbalance in your body. That's why you suffer from things like chronic fatigue syndrome or sometimes called phenomenalgia. Morning you get tired, afternoon tired, evening you get tired, you watch TV also you sleep, you sit under the table also you sleep, you get very tired. Then you have all these irregular menses. Sometimes it comes, it delay a week, two weeks, or heavy flushes or very little. And you also have things like uh, hot flushes, uh, hot flushes or mood swings. Uh, in the morning, you was very nice, suddenly at 10 o'clock, your mood start going haywire and then in the evening, your afternoon, your mood comes. No, this is not your fault because it is the hormone that is driving, it, that is driving you, the mood swings. And there are loss of focus, uh, people get excited, uh, your anxiety and some, you have depression. So these are about all the symptoms of hormonal imbalance. So what you do is, when you have symptoms of, of that sort, take an MCFA, things like virgin coconut oil or lauric acid or capric acid. What it does is that your body recognizes there's a hormonal imbalance. There's too much estrogen and too little of your progesterone. What it, what it does is it goes to your, stimulate your thyroid to, to produce thyroxine. And the thyroxine will go to the blood to break down the, your blood cholesterol, the lipoprotein takes up the lipid protein and immediately manufacture progesterone. As such, it will overcome this hormonal imbalance. And all the symptoms begin to go off one by one. Now, interestingly, there will be a lot of research. That lately, uh, Dr. Frank Schellenberger wrote this paper, How a Doctor Actually Reversed Her Husband Alzheimer Disease in 37 Days. Now, <clears throat> What is that is Alzheimer is something which uh, is getting common. In fact, <coughs> a lot of people uh, think these are dementia and uh, Alzheimer disease. And it's getting from earlier age. And these are the abilities, they begin to forget things, uh, they begin to get uh, crowded in many things. So what she does is, she gave them medium chain fatty acid, basically, all right? And and what, what happened after she prescribed medium chain fatty acid in the form of uh, actually virgin coconut oil? They did a test. So they did a test and they found they found that it improved tremendously, 28% within uh, within almost a, a month of them. So they, she, she continued and she began to do a research and found this is mainly because of the production of some compound we call ketones in the body. Uh, these ketones are created when body fats is broken down for energy. When the body starves for carbohydrates, it starts burning. Your fat stores to create energy. That's why people on low carbs diet lose weight. It's also be, uh, because they produce more ketones. <coughs> now, right, 
ketones are actually very powerful fuel for the brain and when the brain is injured so scientists now found uh, let's say there are 20 different uh, studies on the effect of ketones and most of these studies they are uh, they, they are published in a lot of uh, uh, journals now one of the studies shows that the brain uses when it uses ketones it produces 25 percent more energy than when it uses glucose another study shows that uh, ketone producing diets result in 39 percent increase of blood flow to the brain and another study that they, when they put the, the mice on the ketone producing diet fewer brain plates are found compared to mice that are not fed with a ketone uh, diet so this is what basically the study and when this doctor did over 60 years uh, 60 days uh, he was she was able to actually help her husband to respond a lot of her things except some of her movement which are, other than that her memory improved okay now we are covered about medium chain fatty acids that is part of the saturated fats the other, the other good fats is your omega 3 and the omega 6 now the omega 3 and omega 6 they actually refer to where the double bond in the fatty acid is and they are essential fatty acid what do you mean by essential fatty acid? it means that the body cannot manufacture this fatty acid and you must take them in your diet And the other one is the omega-9, which I told you 40% of your body has this. This is called a conditionally essential fatty acid. In other words, the body can manufacture its own omega-9 fatty acid. Otherwise, they can be consumed or supplementally uh, as uh, from supplements. <clears throat> now, to understand omega-3 and omega-6, we have first to understand what is postaglandins. Now, in the year 1930, actually a, a Swedish scientist called by the name of Von Euler, he discovered certain hormone-like compound in the seminal fluid. Uh, and he thought that this comes from the postate gland and he called it postaglandin. Later on, this was found that it does not just found in men, unique to men, it's also found in women and possibly were present throughout the whole body. Now, postaglandins are actually a class of eicosinoids. They are hormone-like substances. They, they are synthesized from polyunsaturated fatty acids in the food. And they have influence on the blood pressure. They have influence on the synthesis of cholesterol for your hormones uh, they have inflammatory response and also they have influence on palate aggregation that is the cloaking ability of the blood all postaglandins they are synthesized in the body from fatty acids and they involve a series of a lot of uh, steps by control by spatial enzyme there are at least 30 types of different postaglandins in the body but basically, all these 30 types of different postaglandin, they are grouped into three families. That is the PG1, that is postaglandin 1, postaglandin 2, and postaglandin 3. Now, say, we take omega-6, huh? one of the source of essential fatty acids. So, the omega-6 is basically linoleic acid or LA. So this is the mother source and it's broken the body into a GLA or DGLA. Don't worry too much about it. The thing is, uh, omega-6 bifurcates go into two sources of postaglandin. It's either form a postaglandin 1 or it is broken into an undesirable acid, the arachidonic acid, ALA, to form postaglandin 2. Now this postaglandin 2 increases your blood aggregation it keeps it stick your blood together it constrict your blood vessel and this leads to water retention and also increasing blood pressure it promotes inflammation uh, and that for this reason it promotes heart attack it also induces the kidney to retain salt 
Now, omega-3 is actually alpha linolenic acid, ALA. They are broken in the body by series of enzymes into EPA or DHA. Now, either eco-sapentonic acid, EPO or eco acid, DHA, they are all broke, they are all converted into one type of prostaglandin. That is the PGE3, prostaglandin 3. Now, prostaglandin 3 has a con <laughs> and prostaglandin 1, they are the good PGEs. Uh, we have the good and the bad again, PGE. Now, PGE1 and PGE3 reduces your blood aggregation. That means it prevents your blood from sticking together. It dilates your blood arteries, uh, reduce your blood pressure, and reduces inflammation in the body, slows down cholesterol and production in the liver, and helps to prevent heart attack stroke. Uh, which caused by blood clots in the body. In the kidney, it helps to remove excessive fluid and acting as a diuretic. So now, so let us conclude. So in the body, we have the good and bad. Huh? Interesting. I think in Chinese tradition, you have the yin and the yang, but the Western, they break the good and the bad. <clears throat> now, the good PGE, that is your PGE1 and PGE3, as I mentioned here, it prevents inflammation, it prevents allergy, it promotes immune system, it boosts brain cells, it prevents heart attack. In the kidney, it helps to remove fluid and acts as a diuretic. Now, the bad PGE, the PGE3, opposite. It promotes inflammation, promotes allergy, suppress immune system, retard brain cell in you. But, there's one function, prevent internal bleeding. Now, what does this mean? You need PGE3 too. When there's inflammation in your body, there's internal bleeding. You cannot get a doctor to go inside your body to stop the bleeding, right? It has to help do itself. And this is what the job of PGE2 to So what does this tell us? You need both omega-3 and omega-6, right? But in the right ratio. Let's see. Again, it's very boring, huh? sorry ladies and gentlemen, I hate lecturing, but I'm a lecturer, I have to do my job, thank God. Okay, good PGEs, huh? uh, okay, from omega-6, you have, you break into linolenic acid, and this you actually can find is corn oil, safflower oil, something. and later it's broke into GLA, that's right, uh, and Dr. Tan said EPO, this is where it falls in, boric oil. But it also breaks into arachinonic acid. This is the one that is not very desirable when you have too much. PGE1, excellent. Too much PGE3, too not good. Now, they also sometimes arachinonic acid are sometimes found in milk and also daily products. Omega-3, fine. ALA, you can get it from plant sources, perilla oil, chia seed, flax seed, palm, pumpkin walnut, broken down into EPA, fish and fish oil, DHA, fish and fish oil, PG3. But people are avoiding here. Right? So here, let us go to this. The key issue now is that it's the balance of omega-3 and omega-6. You need both of them, but you need a balance. Too much omega-6 produce PG2, it causes havoc in the body. High blood pressure, increase of blood clot, increase. Huh? So, you, but you need to. And that is where balancing is important. Now, omega-3, as I mentioned, is good. Huh? It promotes... Uh, uh, it produces PGE 1 and 3 that lower and your risk of heart attack. The problem today we face is not, yeah, it is too much of omega 6 in our body. Now, another smart scientist came up, said balance is the key, 369. Hey, he studied. Uh, we did a study and found, hey, in the primitive man, <laughs> omega 3 to omega 6, 1 to 1. Uh, because they form from a, what, from, a, <clears throat> from a O group to an A group and all sorts of us. 
theories come out. Scientists like to come out every year new research. Each of them challenge each other. Uh, the thrill of being a scientist is to prove each other every year. So this what they Then they found a nation. Our ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 is 1 is to 10. And Caucasian, American, they eat a lot of burgers and pasta and they are 1. And this is the problem here. The recommendation is 1 is to 4. And because of this imbalance of omega-3 to omega-6, it leads to coronary heart disease, cancer and asthma. So what is the optimal? A ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 it is between 1 to 3 and 1 to 4 and too much of either one create toxicity of one another and also can create deficiency of the other now let us see what are the benefits of omega-3 and omega-6 children there's deficiency in essential fatty acids they are more learning difficulty that's why our breast fat and with breastfed babies, they have higher IQ. Yeah? And scientists have proven up to 8 of 8 when they are bottled compared to those bottle fed. And this is due to the higher level of essential actually uh, fats in, in the breast milk. Now, in November 1986, in the Journal of National Cancer Research, they found that omega 3 is and what it is a <clears throat> seems to say destroy some human cancer cells without damaging the normal cells. Now, I think many of you who are those of cancer, they heard of Johanna Buckwick. It's a, you know, basically what Johanna is a German doctor, lady doctor, who got all the last minute cancer patient. And uh, what she found was, she's actually, she's a doctor, MD, and a biochemist by profession. Uh, she found that people that are having cancer, you know, they have acidic blood and all, they have a yellow-green pigment found in place of the normal red pigment, the hemoglobin. And along with certain, that she gave them actually three tablespoons of flax seed. During that time, they used a lot of flax. Flax seeds so have a very high omega-6. <clears throat> so what she did is she gave them a lot of this essential fatty acid, huh? omega-3, and later within three months, she found that this green, yellow but were replaced by the red and the cancer was uh, gone and later part she even used cottage cheese in which system helps to convert the fat soluble fats into water soluble and more permeable into the into the cell or the, it improves the cell membrane this is what uh, the work of dr johanna buckwick so if you are interested please go there and you check buckwick protocol uh, or buckwick diet uh. Now, uh, the study by Dr. Peter Willis at the University of Dundee in Scotland, what he, what he did was he fed a formula that is um, enriched with DHA and he found that he, he had better solving a uh, problem solving uh, and by giving omega-3 and omega-3 essential fats to pregnant lady, they found that the intellectual power of the of the child uh, is much better than for currently doing more research to see whether does this continues uh, to into adulthood hopefully we can produce super phds at the age of 15 or 14. <laughs> <There's, clears throat> so anyway research has been doing on. now the other one is essential fatty acids and immunity now we found that the this the, actually this Echocenoids, they are special molecules and they act as messengers in the central nervous system and they involve many bodily processes that are related to inflammation and immunity. So the quantity of essential fatty acids actually affects the inflammatory processes in the body. And these are things that are, they have found that they are associated with inflammation. So the Korean researchers did further research and they studied a group of these children. What they did was they measured 308 children, uh, their blood, huh? they take from blood and they measure their red blood cells to see the level of EFA, essential fatty acid, and also the prevalence of allergic symptoms such as dermatitis, hay fever and asthma. 
The result shows that children with most symptoms were found lowest level of EFAs, especially the omega-3, the EPA and the DHA. They are found in oily fish. Okay, so we know that medium chain fatty acids are important. Uh, omega-9 are conditionally uh, essential fatty acids and also omega-3 and omega-6, they are they are essential fatty acid and must be taken in the right ratio. Now, what are the bad fats? Honestly, we are reluctant to call saturated fats the bad fats because the saturated fat, the short and the medium, they are very important. What that's not good are the long chain fatty acid. And most children who are overweight, the biggest culprit is actually mainly sugars and trans fatty acid. Now, these are, the, these are the ugly fats. These fats are damaged. Trans fatty acid does not exist in nature. For example, if I take soya bean oil, a long chain, polyunhine, polyunsaturated fatty acid, I leave it in the supermarket for a week, it will turn rancid because of the long chain. So, in order to make it stable, I have to break the chain. That's what chemical engineer, processing engineer does. So we add hydrogen into the process and this process is called hydrogenation. <coughs> so we break the long chain fatty acid into shorter chain fatty acid. This process is very slow. So we add in catalyst, nickel, selenium, all this to accelerate the process. Now what happened is during the process of hydrogenation, it produced a new class of fatty acid called trans fatty acid. Trans fatty acid don't exist in nature. Trans fatty acid is a result of processing or hydrogenation. Now, <clears throat> these fats, they are damaged, especially in deep fried and processed food uh, that contain hydrogenated vegetable oil. Trans fatty acid are worse for heart disease and they are worse for making people fat. They also block the conversion of essential fats into vital fats such as the GLA and the DHA. And the deficiency in the omega-3, and you have an excess of trans fats, and also lots of sugar. Ah, that is very, very bad. Those are the ones that trigger a lot of degenerative diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that today, one out of four people are suffering from degenerative diseases such like cancer, diabetic, heart attack, and stroke. Now, this is a result of nutrition and lifestyle. If we are really prepared to understand basic nutrition and change your lifestyle, you can actually overcome all these degenerative diseases. The point here today is not we are not treating disease, but we are trying to educate and restore health. So this can be prevented. Medical fees are no longer cheap today, ladies and gentlemen. A bypass can cost you thirty to forty thousand. Three bypasses can cost you a condominium. Now you got to be rich to be sick. Now let's look. A chip, a serving of French of chips and fried fried fish can deliver eight grams of trans fatty acid. A donut twelve grams and a bag of chips up to four grams. Now, trans fatty acid rarely occur in natural food. They are created when fruit is fried. Or their process and they are used widely to extend the shelf life of the food so if you see a food label ladies and gentlemen and it writes that it has a long shelf life a muffin that has an expiry date of six months i will tell you please don't take it because it contains that uh, it uses all these and uh, probably contains trans fatty acid so you used to extend the life shelf life. Uh, today I see bread, muffin, you know, they can put in the shelf for months. Uh, this is something which is uh, a lot of questions. <coughs> now, why do consumers today avoid fish oil? Uh, it used to be a you know, very good uh, omega-3. And basically the research shows that the, it was actually pollution from the sea. 
heavy metal poisoning such as lead, mercury. If you have heard of Miramata disease that caused blindness, the Japanese all is from the, the accumulative accumulation of heavy metals. Heavy metals don't kill you directly. They are accumulated in your liver over the years. And that is how this radiation and also vegetarian avoid all this are consumed fish. <clears throat> so here, if that is the case, what do I take then? If I don't take your fish as a sauce? Okay, there are some good few sources of good omega-3 and 6 and 9 which are scientists from Korea, Japan, US have discovered and they are compounded. They are compounded. When you mix this on your own, when you formulate, the body don't accept it. When it's compounded in the plant, oil, it's very well accepted and there are many of them are bioavailable. One of it is perilla seeds. They contain a very high, unique fatty acids. And interesting about, about this, it has a 411, a very good ratio of 369. Perilla is a very perilla seed is a is a very good a source of omega three six nine, and um, from perilla flower they also found other things uh, that inhibits from perilla, means colon cancers, arteriosclerosis, and also helps in the immune system. <clears throat> because apart from this, many of these plants, they apart from giving you omega three six nine, they also have other active ingredients. Things like rosemary acid, the luteolin, caffeine acid, vitamin E, and epigenic or the flavonoids. Now, ro rosemary acid is anti-allergic. Uh, it is also for antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Luteolin has a whitening effect. Caffeine acid is equivalent to uh, tocophenol, alpha tocophenol, one type of the vitamin E. There are three types of vitamin E, uh, E1, E2, E3. This one of it is very powerful against oxidation of blood cholesterol. And the epigenin is a flavonoid. Flavonoid similar to those of parsley, peppermint, lemon, berries and fruits. This flavonoid has growth inhibitory properties against many human cancer cells like breast cancers and colon cancer cells. Now, as such, there's a lot of benefits too. As a substitute of fish oil, perilla has been found to improve immune system, cardiovascular health, cognitive function, oral health, respiratory health, prevent preterm labor, suppress allergy reaction, and suppress psychotic disorder. Now, another one which you can look into it is actually a chia seed, the Salvia Hispanica, which is used a lot in actually uh, for those uh, weight loss uh, program. And it is very good. Uh, it has fiber, it is high omega 3 oil. So these are some of the examples here about, <clears throat> about uh, some of the alternative for taking omega 3 6. Now, the idea at the end of the day is to tell us that. They are good fats, they are bad fats, they are ugly fats. The good fats are your short and medium fatty acids. Saturated fat, your brain has almost 45% of it. Unless you are prepared to get dementia or you are prepared to get Alzheimer's disease, huh? then you stop taking dementia. Right? So you, you need the medium chain fatty acid, a saturated type. You need the omega-3, omega-6 and those you must take in the right ratio. One part of uh, omega-3 to four parts, three or four parts of omega-6. You need the omega-9, the oleic acid as a, as a supplement, one of the non-essential fatty acid. Try avoid too much of these trans fatty acids. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.